What is up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding, where most of them had a full head of hair. And today we're going to talk about how to grow back your hair, how to retain your hair, and how to basically get a fuller head of hair as a bodybuilder, competitive bodybuilder, and an enhanced bodybuilder. So, I want to make this a relatively quick video, easy to understand, but first, a story about when I was a younger. So, I'll show you a couple of pictures, but when I was younger and I started bodybuilding, I started to take more and more pictures of myself to track my progress. And I also know that back in the day, I had an enormous amount of hair. Never had I ever thought I would ever lose any of that hair, let alone make it thin out so much you could actually see the top of my skull. So basically you see that I grew out my hair for a, quite a few years back in the day. This is when I was like 18 or so, 17 or 18. And I started really getting serious uh, in weightlifting, bodybuilding, resistance training. And I started to take pictures. And you can see that the amount of hair here is pretty much enormous. At this point, people were actually starting to comment on my hair like it was almost too much. Obviously, styling of the hair was left something to be desired. But I actually felt insecure at one point about having so much hair at the top of my head rather than not having enough. So it can go both ways, but other people actually make me feel a bit insecure about the amount of hair probably looking back because they were jealous of the fact that I had an enormous amount of hair they had already lost. Here you can see another picture of a few years later, still rocking a full head of hair, still completely natural by the way, just so you know, because not being natural has an effect, a big effect, on how much hair you can keep on your head. So just for clarification, this I've been you know, having a whole lot of hair on the top of my head for a lot of years, probably until 2019, 2018 maybe, when it started to thin out a little bit. So personally, I never really noticed the hair loss until uh, last year, somewhere around there, where people started to comment on my own photos are you starting to lose your hair? Obviously, it's been a prominent topic of discussion within the bodybuilding community. Some popular channels like More Place, More Days have been talking about it a whole lot. And so it's been quite a, you know, a debate within the bodybuilding world how to keep your hair. And I was actually starting to become one of the victims of hair loss. And it really shocked me because I never thought that me with my super dense hair, that even barbers and hairdressers back in the day were having to thin it out or complimenting my hair on it being so thick, that I would ever lose so much hair that I was actually starting to see my scalp. I pictured about this a little later on. But what is very important to know is you only start to notice hair loss when you've already lost at least half of your hair. So let's say you have 100,000 hair follicles. When about 50,000 have fallen out, that's when you actually notice, when you look in the mirror, oh, wait a second, my hair is starting to thin out. But then you're already halfway to zero, to completely bald, already halfway, guys. So the reason, the most prominent reason why for most men you lose hair is the molecule DHT, dehydrotestosterone. So it's another form of the regular testosterone that builds muscle that we all know. So when your own body produces testosterone, it also converts a little bit into DHT. And this DHT literally binds to your scalp to the hair follicle receptors in your scalp. And when it is bound to those receptors, the effect is miniaturization. Or when it's miniaturized, the hair will fall out. 
That basically is the most simple explanation what DHT does. So that's why you see completely natural men who have never worked out in their life with a bald head with like sideburns only because mostly on the top of your head, those hairs are targeted by the DHT molecule, by that form of testosterone. So even men who never even took testosterone, who produce it naturally, it still can have a severe effect. What we need to do as the first line of defense is lower the DHT. Now for most bodybuilders who may be watching this video, you're going to use testosterone and a big part of the testosterone is going to convert to DHT. However, this also applies to naturals because even if you're producing natural levels, a still a proportional amount will convert to DHT and then over a larger period of time, your hair will still miniaturize and might actually fall out. So of course there's something to do, something very effective to do against the DHT conversion. So if you want to stop the conversion from testosterone to DHT, you can use something like finasteride. It literally is just a capsule, a pill that you can take every single morning and that will actively block the alpha reductase enzyme, which is responsible for converting testosterone to DHT. So if you take that, your DHT levels might drop 70 to 80%, at least 50%. A lot of literature cites different percentages, but it will drop by a whole lot. What I personally use is dutasteride, which is another form of finasteride, but a stronger version. And you only have to take less than half of the amount of finasteride to get the same or even a stronger effect. The strange thing is though, that when I did a blood test uh, a couple of years ago, my DHT levels were low naturally anyway. So regardless being natural or not, my DHT never really was high, but that can already tell you that even with lower DHT levels, if it's not very low, it will still have a pr prominent effect on your um, hair follicles and it will result in your hair getting thinner over time. So lowering it is the best course of action. Now a little side effect you might experience is that DHT is responsible for a lot of male features such as hair growth on your body, beard growth, facial hair growth, but also erection quality, libido, stuff like this. So if you are already suffering from libido issues, erectile dysfunction, lowering the DHT a lot might further impede on those um, things. So you might want to take care of that first before starting the DHT. This does not come without side effects. For me personally, I've not noticed anything because for a lot of people, they can just take finasteride, dutasteride and not notice a thing for years. But there are people who do notice the side effects. So be sure if you're going to use this to do your research. Number two that I did, keep the estrogen in um, higher range. So not over the top, but keep it in a high reference range. So for example, if your estrogen is allowed to go to like 100, keep it at like a 90, for example, to protect your hair follicles. One of the reasons why females barely bald, even when they're 80 or 90, is because the estrogen also protects their hair. It has protected their hair throughout their entire life, whereas for males, we have a minimal amount of estrogen, also naturally converted from testosterone to estrogen by the aromatase uh, enzyme. So when you block the aromatized enzyme, which a lot of bodybuilders do to lower estrogen because they believe it'll lower water retention, for example, for competitions, for a bodybuilding contest. That way you look a lot leaner, you know, no water under the skin. When you do this, you also lose the protection from uh, that estrogen provides to your hair follicle. So you want to actively reduce the cause of the hair loss and at the same time protect the hair from actually, you know, by staying there actually, not falling out. And estrogen has that very effect. So that will give you a double strength effect from both sides. So from the hair loss prevention and the hair regrowth side at the same time. So 
don't use aromatized inhibitors which lower estrogen if hair is very important to you. So one mistake that I made, which is why I lost quite a lot of hair last year, is I used, uh, you know, I drove my estrogen down quite a lot during my contests. I did the Portugal Pro, I did the Poland Pro, and then the Mistro Olympia. So I was prepping for almost eight months or so. And for the majority of those eight months, I think my estrogen was on the low side and my DHT was on the high side. So that is exactly the opposite of what you want. Number three, one of the most potent resources to actually regrow your hair from the outside, so from applying something onto your scalp, is minoxidil. So this is actually originally designed for lowering blood pressure, but they notice as a side effect, it actually grows hair where you put it. So if you put it on your beard, it'll grow hair there. If you put it on your arms, it'll grow hair there. And guess what? If you put it on your head, it'll grow hair there as well. So. I used minoxidil for a couple of months in combination with the previous things I mentioned and I noticed after a couple of weeks, hey wait a second, my hair has actually started to get thicker. There are a couple of different things you want to look out for with minoxidil. So I personally use two kinds of minoxidil, I use it two times a day. So what you want to do, this one. This is Kirkland minoxidil, it's the cheapest one so it doesn't cost a lot of money. I paid maybe like 50 euros and this will last me six months because I have several of these via Amazon. And what you want to do is you basically squeeze this, pull up a milliliter of minoxidil and here you go. This is literally, as you can see, the drops come out. You put this on your head before bed guys, before bed. Why do I say before bed? Even though you want to do it twice a day, which means morning and before bed. Because I mentioned this is a cheap variation. So the minoxidil is minoxidil. That won't change for any brand. But the type of solution they use is cheap, which means if you put this in your hair in the morning, it'll turn really greasy. You won't be able to properly style your hair with that in it. I did that for a while and I looked kind of ridiculous, but I was like, okay, this is going to be worth it because when I have a full head of hair again, I'll be redeemed. But what you want to use in the morning is something of a higher quality. So this also is a minoxidil solution. So here is a 5% solution, which means for every 100 mils, there is five milligrams of minoxidil in here. And what that means is also having a better, more higher quality brand is that it will have a solution that won't mess up your hair. This company, DS Laboratories, is specialized in making your hair look the best. So the last thing they want to do is put something in here that will ruin the look of your hair. So what you use, this use a milliliter in the evening before you go to bed. And this you use in the morning, so it also has a nice uh, head like this. You can put it really on top of your uh, scalp, spray a couple of times. If you spray six times, it's a milliliter. So then you basically put it on your head, scrub it all over your, um, your scalp, and that's it. You feel like a little bit of wetness, a little bit of dampness all over your scalp when you do it, but like five minutes later, it's completely gone, absorbed, and it's going to do its thing. Now, why does it regrow hair? It has something to do with potash potassium channeling or something. Doesn't really matter. You just have to know it'll regrow hair and it's been often used by a whole lot of companies, a whole lot of people to actively do that very thing. Minoxidil also can have some side effects. Um, for example, a dry skin, even some joint pain. Some people have, have mentioned online, but I personally also have noticed nothing like that. Number four, we go to shower every day, every other day at least, right? What do you put in your hair? Whoa, we have a shampoo, we have a conditioner. Why not use a shampoo and conditioner that also has an active effect on hair growth, on hair health? 
there are a lot of brands in your personal supermarket or store where you go to buy your shampoo that all claim they will strengthen your hair, make your hair look thicker, more shiny, but nothing works quite as well as something with the compound called, let me just see, ketoconazole. I had to look it up because it's a difficult word, especially for a Dutchman like me, but using a shampoo like this has that compound ketoconazole in it. And what that does, it, it's, it's an anti-inflammatory for your scalp. So one other reason that can cause hair loss is when you are inflamed and when your uh, scalp is inflamed, when there's inflammation around the hair follicles, it won't be able to take up nutrients for growth. It won't be able to strengthen itself. And that can also be a contributing factor for hair loss. If you truly want to target hair regrowth, you don't want to leave any stone unturned. And this is actually quite a large stone that you can use because I, you can use this literally every single day. If you go to the shower every single day, you can use this. So it's a daily thing you can introduce to occur hair growth. So just put this in your hair when you go to the shower, let it in there for like three to four minutes. Most people even uh, do it for 10 minutes to make sure it's properly absorbed. But then that also will cause lessened inflammation, more nutrient uptake, and better blood flow, which is all beneficial for hair growth. Now these shampoos, and uh, they also have a conditioner which you can use, and the conditioner will make your hair more calmable. You can put a calm in it more easily. Not sure if it's an English word, but whatever. Makes it more shiny, a little, a little heavier, a little more thick to, uh, to the uh, visual appearance, but you can get all these shampoos and the best one I recommend down in the description below. And of course, use my discount code to get a discount. You will not regret it. Number five, guys, you may do the first four things, but that might only be half of the solution. If you literally want to double the effect of at least a minoxidil and a shampoo, you might want to use a micro needling device. So a micro needling device, what does this do? Do I really have to do this? It looks weird. Is it really proven to work? Yes, guys, this actually is one of the things that will accelerate your hair growth and hair uh, loss prevention by two times, so twice as fast. So what this does, this has literally micro needles in here, like I think like 20 or 30 or 40 very small needles. They will all go up and down very quickly as you can hear. You hear that? And you can see that. It looks kind of weird on the uh, camera but it goes up and down really, really quickly. And you can even adjust the speed with this button. I personally use the Dr. Pen microneedling device because it is wireless. You can take it anywhere and you can very easily buy extra cartridges like this to put on top to use it for your device. But most importantly, what does this do? So it actually will allow everything you put on your scalp to be absorbed more easily but also it will trigger collagen synthesis, but also the synthesis, the synthesis of your hair. So the repair and growth of the tissues where you apply this. So this is also often used for fine wrinkles in the face. If you look this up on Google and find like a micro needling session, you might pay like a hundred dollars for like an hour of them working on your face with exactly devices like this, maybe a little more advanced, but the exact same application, small needles moving very quickly up and down inside of your skin. So they move like one to one and a half millimeters inside of your skin and they will trigger responses because they will do micro tearing, micro puncturing, micro damage. And when something is being micro damaged in your body, in your skin, 
you will have an effect of the body that will cause it to repair itself a little more than it was before the damage occurred. So collagen will strengthen, the skin will tighten, but also the hair will grow quicker. So trust me guys, you only have to do this like a 15 minute session once a week. Make sure to really get it all over your head. Does it hurt? It hurts. Not. It doesn't hurt. It's just a, a, a slight stinging sensation. Um, if it really does hurt, you might be going too deep. You might be pressing too hard. Personally, I don't really feel much of it. I, it doesn't annoy me at all. Just the, the knowledge that it will accelerate hair growth by potentially two times is more than enough motivation for me. What, what did I pay for this? Like, I don't even think it was 100 euros. And trust me, only having, if you do two sessions with this, you've already um, made up the money that you would have paid for two sessions for, with a professional wh where the effect would be the exact same guy. So don't hesitate to make this a priority in your hair growth protocol, because if you've been doing all the previous things and you still haven't really um, you know, seen the results you want, adding this will give you the results twice as fast. So number six, pretty much the last thing you can do is hair nutrition from the inside out and supplementation you can take. And personally, I only take biotin at 10,000% of the recommended daily dosage. So that's quite a lot, but it doesn't harm you at the same time at all. So taking biotin is great for nails, but also your hair. So if for some reason you can't get enough biotin from your diet, you can get it from the supplement and I just take it just to be sure my hair has enough nutrition to at least strengthen itself and regrow itself along with all the methods I've been using that I mentioned previously. And number seven, whoa, is there a number seven? Yes, the number seven to me is optional. Let me show you what it is. It is called are you, come on, let's sharpen, are you 58841? So what is this? This is basically, let me show you, a powder, as you can see. This powder you mix with a solution, just like minoxidil starts at a powder, you also mix it in a solution. Well, it's already pre-mixed by the company, but if you would buy the powder, you mix it with a solution, and it has to be a solution that is able to absorb throughout the skin, of course. But hey, if you want to do that, do your own research. But you can mix this up with a solution and also put it on your scalp, just like the minoxidil. The main difference between this and minoxidil is that this has also been proven to prevent hair loss. Why? Because this takes over the place of DHT and testosterone, for example, by from attaching to the hair follicle. So this basically will attach to the hair follicle before DHT can. And what happens then? The DHT won't have any room to attach to the hair follicle, to the hair receptor again anymore. So it simply won't, at least to a much lesser degree. So putting this on your scalp every single day can also help. I did this for like six months. But even by just doing this and nothing else, it wasn't enough to prevent my, my hair loss that I had. So you can try it. If everything you've just tried doesn't work quite enough, you can add this on top to, uh, you know, to basically nuke your scalp with as many options as possible. But this, for a lot of people, this really does help, especially in the slightly higher dosages that people like to use. If you put this on your scalp every single day, maybe twice a day, you will also get results most likely. But for me personally, I got a lot more results with the methods I used and I mentioned previously. And then that's pretty much the protocol that I have used. Am I happy with the results? Oh yes, I was. I was legitimately insecure, starting to get insecure about the hair. And at the same time, I didn't even realize it was that bad until I saw how much have grown back. As you can see right now, you can barely see the scalp throughout the hair. And <laughs> if you look back at the picture that I had put in this video at the start, I mean, you can see the scalp clear as day. 
But at that time, I didn't even realize it was that bad because it happens very gradually, guys. So just be on the lookout for this and try to prevent it But because prevention is so much better than trying to cure your hair loss. So even if, you're, if hair is important to you, you are a serious bodybuilder or even not even a bodybuilder, but you know you have a higher testosterone level or you know, just you want to be sure to prevent hair loss, they just follow some of these guidelines. At least, for example, the finasteride is something very simple you can do, the minoxidil, very simple you can do, that will be the blunt force methods to reduce hair loss and actually promote hair growth. So, I can imagine you guys might have some questions, so I at least have some that I can answer before you have to ask them down in the comments, for example. What about saw palmetto? This is a supplement that will actually reduce the DHT uh, a little bit naturally. It's also been used for people with prostate problems. So if you have, for example, enlarged prostate, finasteride is something that they prescribe to make sure that the prostate isn't being targeted by the DHT anymore, which causes the growth in the first place. And saw palmetto is like a first line of defense for some people. But does it even come close to lowering the DHT like finasteride? No. Is it something you can rely on to keep hair loss at bay? Also no. But is it something that you can use intermittently in between using finasteride? Maybe. I've done that at the beginning because I was afraid of the effects of finasteride I mentioned at the beginning. Loss of libido, erectile uh, quality loss, stuff like this. Of course, as a male, you don't want to go through this. So I was kind of afraid that would happen. So I took uh, the test right and I alternated uh, each day with saw palmetto in the morning as well. It worked just fine, but as I noticed, no side effects from the uh, DHT being lower at all. I simply take the Tutascrite uh, every, every morning pretty much, sometimes I skip a day, but pretty much every single morning, and uh, no side effects until now. But if you do experience some side effects, maybe alternating with salt palmetto will um, be a viable option for you. Another question might be, how long until I can expect results? Honestly, I thought at first, well, maybe within a few weeks I can expect to see some visible change. But remember, guys, your hair doesn't grow as fast in general. So you will only start to see results when, you know, the old hair is kind of gone and the new hair is back. So the new hair, meaning that the hair that you didn't see before, which was still, which still needed to grow, has grown to at least an inch or so. And then you might start to see some thickness results because then you can see the scalp less and less. So this might take a couple of months for you to actually notice. So what is important here? Consistency determination. Don't give up, guys. Just like with bodybuilding, just don't give up. And another question is, can I stop taking some of this when I get my hair back? Unfortunately, no. What you can do is you can lower everything to a maintenance level, but if you stop, especially if you stop minoxidil, if you look online and even in the literature, trust me guys, you don't want to go through that because every single, whoops, uh, the camera overheated there a little bit. But what I wanted to say is, if you stop minoxidil, every hair growth you occurred that you regained will fall out again. So this is something you might have to do for the rest of your life until they come out with something else, but until now, this is pretty much what you have to do. And if you are a consistent bodybuilder anyway, you're taking your supplements every single day, you're having your six meals a day, you're having your workout every single day, well not every single day, but most of the days, you're tracking your sleep. If you are one of these guys, adding this to your regime won't matter anyway. So that's my recommendation. And I really hope I can help a lot of you guys. And I wanted to shout out more plates, more dates. So uh, Derek from More Plates, More Dates, check out his YouTube if for some miracle you haven't. 
the reason why I'm making this video is because a lot of people have asked me, but he is the original uh, hair loss prevention guru basically on YouTube uh, in the bodybuilding realm. But right now he's, he's so popular that that is not his only um, topic of interest anymore. He uh, does a lot other videos, so you guys might not realize how much videos he has made in the past regarding hair loss. But since a lot of people asked me regarding what I personally do, I thought I would make a video for you guys. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, ask them down below. And as always, don't forget to stay golden.